Now, throughout this course, we talked about different Kubernetes resources, uh, their purpose, how to use them, and how they work. However, sometimes you will run into scenarios where the existing resources are too limiting or they're not precisely what you need. For these purposes, Kubernetes also supports custom resource definitions or CRDs. Each resource in Kubernetes, uh, such as pods, services, deployments, is an endpoint on the Kubernetes API. This endpoint stores the collection of Kubernetes objects. We've seen an example of an API uh, uh, when we talked about service accounts and where we were accessing the pod information using the kubernetes.default slash API URL. Other Kubernetes resources have similar endpoints in the API, and you can use that API to uh, get the objects, to create, update, or delete the objects. Custom resources are a way of extending that Kubernetes API. So you can develop your own resource, let's say my cool pod, and then install it on your cluster or any other Kubernetes cluster. Once that resource is installed, you can create its object using the Kubernetes CLI, just like you would do it for services or deployments. So let's say you registered or created a custom resource called My Cool Pod. You could use kubectl get my cool pod or describe to interact with the object of the My Cool Pod kind. Custom resources on their own uh, simply allow you to store and retrieve the data. But to make them more powerful, you can combine them with a custom controller. Using this custom controller, you can get a proper declarative API that allows you to declare your resources desired state and then keep the object's current state in sync with the desired state. So that's just like uh, the replica set controller does when it tries to maintain the pod replicas. So let's say you wanted to create a custom resource called PDF document, and that resource will take the text in the resource and then save that resource as a markdown file, and then it's going to convert it to a PDF file. We will use the Kubernetes volume to store the markdown and the PDF files. Uh, there will be two init containers. The first one will take the text, store it to the markdown file, and then the second one will use that markdown file to create a PDF file. So let's come up with the resource definition. So let's create the PDF document, PDF document.yaml, and just define how we want this resource to look like. So let's say we wanted a PDF document will be the kind of the resource, metadata, uh, it will have the name, let's call it my document. And then under spec, we will have the document name. So this is how the file will be named. And then we'll have some text and this would be like a my document, uh, document, and then we can say hello and then make it in bold world, for example. Now, if I try to create this resource using the CLI, uh, I'll get an error. So let's see how this looks like. So I'll say Kubernetes, uh, kubectl, apply PDF document.yaml. And this will fail uh, because there's no API version set. So Kubernetes doesn't really understand what this resource is all about. So we need to tell Kubernetes about this PDF document kind. And the way that we can do this is through the uh, custom resource definition. So let's create the custom resource definition for the PDF document kind. So I'll create a new file here and let's just call it PDF custom resource definition. I'll paste the YAML in and then we can go through this and explain it. So this is the name of our custom resource definition and the name of the CRD uh, uses the following format. So it uses the plural name of the resource, which is PDF documents. And it also uses the group name. So it's PDF documents, which is the plural dot, whatever the group name is. And in our case, I just set it to Kubernetes dot start Kubernetes dot com. Uh, the name of the group uh, that we use, uh, and this is the name that we'll see in the REST API. So we have the group name and the version, and this will end up being uh, a, under APIs, and then the group name will be kubernetes.startkubernetes.com slash v1, because this is one of the versions that we have defined. Uh, 
We are also specifying that this resource will be namespaced, meaning uh, you have to specify the namespace when you're creating it. Another option here would be to make the resource cluster scoped, meaning there's a uh, you can only have a uh, resource. You don't have to specify the namespace for this resource. Under the versions, we're specifying all the versions. In our case, there's only one. And then down here under names, we're specifying the kind of this resource, which is the PDF document. And then the singular, plural, and the short names for our uh, resource. These are the short names that we'll be able to use uh, when running Kubernetes CLI. Finally, under the schema, uh, we're actually specifying how this resource is going to look like using the open API specification format. So this uh, spec format allows us to define a more structural schema. Uh, we can also define, we could define required fields, or we can specify any uh, patterns that the fields need to conform to. So let's create this CRD and we'll say kubectl apply minus f pdf crd.yaml. So Kubernetes created this one and now I can use either PDF, PDFs of or PDF document to list all the PDF document resources in the cluster. So let's do kubectl get PDF document. And notice that this time it did not fail. Uh, it just simply said that there's no resources found in the default namespace, no resources of the PDF document type. I could also do uh, kubectl get PDF. It'll do the same uh, thing. Uh, let's also list this uh, under the API resources. Now I'm just going to grip for PDF so you can see how it looks like. So notice there's the name, uh, the short names, and then the group name and the actual kind of uh, the resource. So Kubernetes also created a namespaced REST API endpoint for our PDF um, for our PDF document resource. So let's look at that. So I'm just going to start a proxy uh, on port 8080, and I'll open a separate separate window here, terminal window below. And we'll just curl to localhost 8080 slash APIs. And I'll just grep for uh, Kubernetes start Kubernetes.com. Uh, so notice there's the group version, the name. Uh, let me actually just not grep and see if we can find it. Uh, there you go. So you'll notice we have an API here. That's the one that we defined. And this is the group name as well as the version. Now, if we wanted to access the PDF documents API, just like we accessed the uh, pods and namespaces uh, earlier, we could do that as well. So we could do localhost 8080 APIs Kubernetes dot start Kubernetes dot com. So that's the group name version namespaces because these are the namespace uh, resources. And then we can say default namespace and then do PDF documents. So notice that we, we got back a response. There are zero items because we haven't created anything. Uh, uh, but let's see what would happen if we would actually create this PDF document resource. So let's do kubectl apply minus F PDF document dot YAML. Oh, I actually have to specify the API version right now because we do have one. So let's do that way. Uh, actually, I need to specify the full group name as well. Start Kubernetes.com slash V1. So let's save that and let's try again. And this time the my document resource of type PDF document was created. So this means that we could list it as well. Get PDF. There's my document. And if we curl again to the API, you'll see that we actually get back uh, one item of type PDF document, and you'll see there's the there's the text that we said uh, um, we set in that resource as well. Now this resource will behave like just like any other Kubernetes resource, uh, but without a controller, this resource is is pretty much useless. So let's see how we can create a simple controller. And this what this controller will do. It will create a job whenever we create a new. PDF document resource. That job will then take the text from the resource and it will use the init containers to create a PDF document from it.
So let's create the PDF document controller. I'll use Cube Builder to build the CRD and the controller. So let's create a folder first. So I'll call it PDF uh, controller folder. And then from within this folder, I'll initialize the module called start kubernetes.com slash v1. And then we'll run the cube builder init command. The cube builder init command will create the project structure and it's going to uh, create any other files that are needed for the controller. Now, once this completes, then we'll have to create the structure for the custom resource using the cube builder create API command. Okay, so the command completed, and let's use the cube builder create API to create the API. So we'll say cube, cube builder create, create API dash dash group is going to be Kubernetes dot start Kubernetes dot com. Version will be v1, and kind will be PDF document. So we're going to get prompted if you want to create a resource. Yes, we do. Do we want to create a controller? Yes, we do as well. And then this will go ahead and it's going to create all the files uh, uh, required uh, for us to create the resource, the CRD, as well as to create the controller. So once this is done, we will open the folder here, the PDF controller in the editor. And then we'll go to uh, to the uh, API and V1 folder. And this is where the PDF document types are defined. And you'll notice down here, uh, it's just an example field for the PDF document. So here's where we can define those same fields that we defined in the custom resource uh, definition. So we'll say document, document name, it's gonna be a string. And then the name of the field will be document name, and we'll say omit empty this and then the second one the second property will be text and this will be string as well and the name of the field will be text and we're going to omit empty here as well now the next part is to actually go and implement a controller inside the pdf document controller file so let's look at the let's look at that controller file so this is where we would put all of our logic on how to do, uh, what to do when there's a new PDF document that gets created. Now, as I mentioned before, to implement the functionality, what I'll do is I will use two init containers. And then the first init container will read the text file from the resource, and it's gonna store it in the markdown file on a volume that's gonna be shared between all containers. Once that markdown file is stored, the second init container will run the pandoc image, and that image will, is just going to convert the MD file into the PDF file. This PDF file, the converted one, will be stored on the shared volume as well. Finally, the main container will just sleep, uh, just so we can copy over the results to our local machine. Now, to make this more realistic, what you could do is you could use a persistent volume and then store the converted PDF documents there. For the sake of simplicity and just to demonstrate how uh, controllers work, I'll just use a uh, uh, regular volume. Okay, so I added a bunch of code here and let's just walk through this one. So in the reconcile function, what I'm doing is I'm uh, trying to get the PDF document uh, resource. And if that fails, we're just going to uh, return an error and say we're unable to fetch the PDF document. Then I've created this create job function down here that I'll go through. Uh, we're creating the job specification. And this job specification will have the init containers and everything that we need to uh, go from the markdown to, uh, to the PDF document. And then once we, once we get that job spec without any errors, of course, we're just going to go and create that job. And once that job is created, it will uh, run those containers, run those init containers, and it will actually create the PDF document. So let's look at the create job uh, function here. Uh, so we're just creating a new instance of uh, the job resource. We're specifying the, the object name, the namespace. And then under the spec, uh, we're specifying the pod template. And we're defining two init containers. The first one is called store to markdown. And what it's going to do is it's just going to uh, uh, base64 uh, uh, decode the, um, 
the text, so the value that we get from the text, and we're encoding it here. Uh, and then it's just gonna write it to the data slash text.md file to the shared volume. And this is where the volume gets mounted. And then once this first container, first init container is finished, uh, we're gonna run the second one. And this one is actually running the pandoc image. So it has the pandoc binary. And what it's gonna do is it will just create the PDF file using the document name that we specified in the PDF document resource. And it will create the PDF file again in the shared volume. Once both init containers are done, we'll have a simple main container that's gonna sleep for a while while and it will mount this volume. And that's pretty much it for the code for this, uh, uh, for our simple controller. So let's go and try to run this. But before we run the controller, we need to create the custom resource definition first. So let's do that by using kubectl apply minus F, and then we'll go to uh, config CRD basis and then Kubernetes DOS start Kubernetes. There we go. So this will actually create the CRD. Uh, so we can list it, kubectl get CRD. There you go. So the PDF documents, Kubernetes start Kubernetes.com is created. And now that we have this, we can actually run, use make run to uh, run the controller. So once the controller is up and running, we will be able to create the uh, PDF document resource and see how the uh, reconcile method in the controller will go ahead and create the job and the job will create the pods. Okay, so the controller is running. So let's just open a separate terminal window. And from here, what we'll do is we will deploy that same PDF document that we had before. So I'll say kubectl, actually I'll move one level higher, kubectl apply minus f pdf document dot yaml. So there you go, you'll notice that there was a debug log line that was written to the log saying that uh, the resource was successfully reconciled, the controller was PDF document, and the request was pretty much the my document resource that we created in the default namespace. So let's look at this PDF document that was created, just like before, uh, we're able to create the resource, and then also look at the jobs, because jobs, this is the job that was created by, uh, by our controller. And then this job, also created the pods. You'll notice that the pod is already running, meaning that the two uh, init containers have completed and we've actually got the PDF document created. So we'll just use kubectl copy and we'll copy the PDF document from this pod. And the document is in the data slash my text because that's the document name dot PDF. And we'll just copy this document over to say mytext.pdf in the current folder. Uh, okay, so I'll just open the PDF document and it open on a different one and there you go. So we have a PDF document from the markdown text that we created in the PDF document uh, resource.